check it out. I, uh, actually, I had to put that back up again because uh, Instagram last week, when I held it up, it was actually outside the screen. So <laughs> there's me mate, Toby Keith. Um, check out the resemblance. Oh, I've just lost it. Anyway, <laughs> that was last week. This is this week. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. How is all going? And um, just thought uh, I'd bung it up because uh, Insta couldn't see it um, uh, last week, so I thought I'd throw that up there. Hey, uh, listen, I uh, hope everyone's had a great week. I, I did promise I was going to do a walkthrough this week, but, well, just absolutely flat out. And I didn't have a chance to um, organise that with Storm. Um, uh, yeah, had heaps going on and just trying to keep out of trouble, you know, and uh, had one delivery this week down past Goulburn, and that was uh, that was great. Um, I love it uh, when things it all goes, uh, goes well and uh, uh, just driving in, bit of an off-road track out in the bush there and then... Um, uh, just going into the property and that, and then uh, a bit street going up the driveway, and uh, but uh, the truck managed to get up there all right. That's with the with the existing truck, but soon, soon I'll have the new Hino with the four wheel drive, and it'll make it look easy. So looking forward to cracking that open uh, in due course. So yeah, real sorry I didn't have the walkthrough organised for you this week, and then then we sort of planned. Uh, G'day Fiona. Then we had planned to organise to go to um, over to uh, Jets, one of our clients to do a walkthrough of hers, but then it started raining, so that threw a spanner into work, so I thought, oh, yeah, you just got me to put up with again today. So, uh, but I've got a mountain of questions here anyway, uh, but if you've got any questions, make sure you bung them up on the screen there, and uh, we'll crack into those as we travel through um, this afternoon. So I hope, you, like I said, I hope everyone's had a great uh, day this afternoon. Um, just want to throw out there, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've had a few of our clients coming through new clients um, and under advice from their uh, accountants, um, hey, listen, if you can buy yourself an office before end of year, uh, we can actually write it off in your, in your tax, so save you a fortune in tax. So um, um, there's been two or three of those come through in this last couple of weeks. So um, if you're keen to save some big bucks on your tax and you're looking at it uh, to organise a tax deduction, uh, we can actually organise your tiny home to be a office and um, crack into that, save yourself tens of thousands of dollars and uh, write off on your tax. So um, it's all legal, it's all above board, um, but you just need to, that's the right uh, language, you've got to speak for your uh, tax man. Um, of course, an office is an office, and if you're working from home, it's obviously classified as an office, so that you can actually write it off on your tax. So save your fortune, so definitely something worth looking into. We've got a couple of, uh, oh, we've actually got about, uh, probably about three or four left, uh, before end of financial year that uh, got VIN numbers, we can put a VIN number on it, get yourself, uh, get a get a contract organised, get the paperwork done before January, uh, sorry, June 30, write it off on your tax. Like I said, tens of thousands of dollars you can actually save. So you basically get your tiny house for half price because of the tax write-off you can actually do. It's all legal, it's all above board, but if you're keen, give us a call. We've got about three left, three trailer VIN numbers left that we can actually lock in for the end of financial year. Right. Oh, okay. So with that, got a heap of questions uh, uh, this week. Uh, people are um, belting them into us, and uh, which is awesome. So I'll, I'll crack straight into those. Uh, number one, first question: uh, the auto start has stopped working on my generator, and it won't turn on when I do it manually. Okay, this is my bear. Um, definitely did forget to tell some of our clients that the uh, generators, the auto start generators, don't have an alternator. So on your car. Every time you start your car, you actually, uh, uh, you're using battery power, battery storage in your car. However, a car's got an alternator. What an alternator does, that alternator actually charges your batteries. On the auto start generator, smart generators, they don't have an alternator. So what that means every probably two or three weeks, you've actually got to get a 12 volt battery charger. You can actually plug it into the generator, start the generator up, hook it onto the battery on the generator and actually charge your own battery. So it's sort of like centrifugal motion, you know. <laughs> anyway, long story short, that's what will happen because uh, obviously, especially coming into the winter months, you'll find your generators will probably start, probably use, you'll use your generators a little bit more frequently because you're not, you haven't got as much sunshine, you haven't got as much heat in the sun, yeah, um, uh, there's obviously less sun in the sky, which means your batteries probably aren't gonna hit full capacity of battery storage, which uh, means your generator is going to start a lot more frequently, So, which means then you're using the battery a lot more on the generator, which means you need to charge it um, as well. So it's not the actual, uh, it's not as if the generator is playing up uh, or the battery is faulty, it's just flat. <laughs> it just needs to be charged. So 
it's my bear, it is something I haven't um, actually uh, 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 told my clients to actually do. So, but ultimately what you've got to do is get yourself, I mean, you can pick them up for about 30 bucks from Bunnings, they're not expensive. Uh, like I said, you can actually plug it into the generator itself, start the generator up and hook the uh, battery terminals off the uh, battery charger onto the own battery of the generator and charge the actual um, battery itself. Or when your home's powering and it's up and running, just run a lead from your home to your battery charger, uh, onto your battery and charge your battery on your uh, generator. So uh, uh, that will get you out of trouble with the, um, the batteries. Okay, can you install a fireplace into the Elliott model? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we've had, uh, we've got two Elliott models going through and both of those are going down to the coal country down in Victoria. So uh, we've actually installed uh, fire, the little pivot fireplaces. Now our clients, remember our clients rave about the pivot fireplaces, love them. They, they, they are so warm, they're so efficient. You only need a couple of little sticks of timber, like hardwood, not just softwood. Hardwood timber, man, they'll burn through the night, they'll heat your tiny home for the whole night, and they're unbelievable. So, and then that actual, because of the positioning um, of the way the, uh, the floor plate of the Elliot is, the, uh, the fireplace itself actually goes straight up through the roof, rather than out the wall, it actually goes straight up through the roof past the second loft, so it doesn't hinder the lofts above but it goes up through the actual roof itself. Ideally positioned so you can actually, when you're sitting in, say, your two-seater lounge, you're looking, the uh, fireplace is on your left, and you're looking out the window, and um, it, just, it just works. So great, um, a great little uh, add-on for your uh, tiny homes if you, if you go for the, uh, the Elliott model with a fireplace. So highly recommend it. Do you have any uh, homes available that you had at the Hawkesbury Expo? Uh, actually, the larger homes, uh, the Elliott sold, the uh, uh, Charlo sold. We have an offer and acceptance on the um, specky we had out there. So the larger homes are gone. Um, Turing Tiny sold. The, I think there's a Tucker Rest and a, um, a Bow River left. So if you're keen on, you want something before the end of the financial year, we still have a couple of smaller homes available uh, that straight off the shelf, you can actually take them home. But uh, for speckies, uh, although in, in our build queue, we, uh, uh, Haven, we actually said every, say, couple of months, we actually slot into our build queue a uh, just a specky. Uh, this month, uh, uh, I've actually got in the queue a... Um, an Elliott model, we actually start that Tuesday, Wednesday this week. So if you're keen, you're after a home before Christmas, uh, we have an Elliott model um, that will be available in around about four months time. We're starting it this week. Uh, so uh, it'll be obviously just based our standard Elliott model, changes, limited changes on that, apart from bunging in a fireplace. Uh, I won't be putting that in this specky, but we'll just be building it as a specky because we've got all of our other custom homes that are in the queue that'll be falling on straight after that. So if you're keen, you want to put your name on an Elliot going through, jump the queue only because it's already in our queue to be built. Uh, so you can actually put your name on that and lock it in. So um, give us a call this week or uh, speak to me or Stu and you can actually uh, put your name on that one. Uh, what is the largest you can build a relocatable home? Okay, yeah, I was chatting to um, a, a client this week. What they're looking at doing, they don't need it as to be classified as an actual caravan. They want it as a relocatable home. So what that means is we'll be actually removing it off the trailer, on site, training it straight onto their foundation. Now, the largest we will do the relocatable homes is 3.5 metres wide. So that's the overall width. 3.5 metres uh, wide and 11 metres long. So that's like 30, I think it works out about 37 square metres of footprint, ground floor, two bedroom, bathroom, lounge, dining, kitchen, all on the one level. So if you're keen to look into that and, and want to set your, um, you have a, a building permit on your block, whether it be a house block or a, uh, or a rural property, um, the biggest we'll do the relocatable homes is 3.5 metres wide, 11 metres long, 37 square metres, two better, bathroom, uh, the whole shooting shebang. So, uh, um, so if you're keen to look into a relocatable home to get it approved as an actual house, not just be a caravan, uh, give us a call this week and we can um, uh, we can set that up. G'day, Sharon. I like your live shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know they're a bit rough. I'm a bit rough around the edges, but um, I, I've actually. I was telling someone the other day, I actually don't mind doing the live, so 
when people actually get to meet me in person, uh, they don't get such a shock, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, that's Rick. He looks the same as he does on his live. That's right, man. I, got, I don't pull any punches here. I'm a bit rough around the edges, but uh, what you see is what you get. Okay, I saw the delivery this week uh, with the fly screen enclosed deck. Can you do that on any model? Yeah, I mean, we're actually just starting to work. I've got a, our, um, our new, uh, we've got a new supplier now of our screens, uh, Bayside Security. These guys are just, I'm, I'm loving them. I, this, this is like, just like Hey, Fellas, got 13 homes to come and measure. Bam, they're on it. Next day, brrr, within weeks, they got all our, all our homes done. I mean, they, but the amount of windows that are actually in our tiny homes, these are like project homes. There's the same amount of windows, and even our window um, uh, our supplier, Bradman's, when, they, when the guys drop off the windows, they're sort of saying, um, make sure, uh, they just can't believe how many windows for a tiny home. It's just insane, because it's huge. It's just as many as an actual uh, project home, so it's massive. Yeah, just tapping back, oh, what have we got there? Fiona, make sure you do a walkthrough of the relocatable home. Absolutely, we'll be doing that. So... Um, Actually, I've got in the, uh, for our next specy in about five weeks' time, um, as I mentioned to you, we, at the moment we're starting a new tiny home about every four working days, so it's pretty hectic, it's pretty flat out. We've picked up some more land, but more on that down the track. It's just huge, I'm just loving it. We're building our own factory, and we've got more land on top of that, and more land for the, uh, our display village as well. So that's really exciting, which means it's going to put us in a uh, position where we can actually fast track our models and, and build them actually quicker than we already are, which that means I can get them out of the factory and, and keep the show on the road, you know. So um, definitely be doing a walkthrough of the relocatable home. But, oh, oh, that's where I was going. Okay, I've ordered, you ready for this? 11-metre trailer, 11 metres. So the total length or the maximum length you can actually build a tiny home that is a trailer, is 12 and a half metres long. Now that's from the end of the tiny home right to the hitch itself. So that means you've got one and a half metres of hitch. That means the tiny home can be 11 metres long. Now, I reckon I'm on the money with the weight. Of course, this is only gonna be single level. Single level home, uh, it won't be two storey. Uh, I've done my figures, I've done my sums. I believe it'll come in at four and a half tonne. Uh, so I'm talking 11 metre home, three metres wide. It's going to be based off our Charlo model, but with one extra bedroom. So what that mean is ground floor, two bedrooms downstairs, bathroom, a walk past bathroom. So I'll have a little hallway, bathroom. It'll, it'll actually go uh, lounge, kitchen. Then you'll have your a, a bedroom, hallway, bathroom, hallway, bedroom at the end. Two bedroom, ground floor, wow. So looking for, oh, this is gonna crack open a whole new market because the interest from the elderly, elderly generation is massive. Like people, they don't wanna walk upstairs. Like they go to the toilet two or three times a night, they can't walk downstairs in the, in the, uh, in the nighttime, okay? So they just wanna be all on the ground floor. So I just, just I think just a supply and demand, so we're gonna crack into it, we're just gonna give it a go. Uh, I'm always one just to, um, people ask the question, I just say yep, and then I'll just work it out later, you know? So. Um, so I'm so excited to um, get get stuck into that. Now that'll be on our next trailer delivery for our next specy in the in the coming months that we'll be doing. Uh, once we have got that built, we'll be bunging it up online. It's going to be winner take all on that one. But I'm really I just want to get the photo shoot done of it because it's going to be massive. So really looking forward to cracking that open. Not sure what we're going to take up at the Cleveland show, but hey, if the weight comes in right, I'm taking that up to Cleveland. It's going to be huge. Although in saying that. I'm thinking the Elliott model up in Queensland. When I was up there last year at uh, the Cleveland show, that, that, I mean, we were a bit conservative. We took up a, um, I think it was a, uh, a Jackson model or, um, I think it was a Jackson model we took up there, but it was a little bit conserved, just conservative colours and had the deck and the awning on it, but it was just sort of, sort of like a bit of a country home, you know? It just didn't have that wow factor. I mean, it's a beautiful home, don't get me wrong, and it sold at the show, um, which is awesome, but, uh, this time around, I'm, I'm, I just need to go for that punch above me, uh, me belt, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, uh, I reckon the Elliot's going to go well up there. So I'm thinking at this stage we're going to take an Elliot uh, up to Queensland. They love the glass up there. They love the views. So uh, looking at um, <laughs> Murray. G'day, Murray. Uru, yeah, hey, it's a bit early yet to say Uru. I've still got half a dozen questions to go, mate. Oh, Murray. Hey, did, I, I think you've seen... Um, 
uh, Murray and Dash, they've, they've been sending photos through of the uh, the home we took down the coast. I forget the name of the, the place now. Um, but they've really decked it out, man. They've done such a great job. They sent photos through of the sunset, uh, sunset got a bit of a fire pit happening, and um, they got it available for weekenders as well. So jump on it. Hey, Charlie, we got that online yet, Murray and Dashes? No, I don't think it's online. Not online yet, but that's going to come up in our Hovenwood stay. So, Murray. Get, get all your details through, get your photo shoot done. We're going to get that up online so um, so people can have a chance to come down and uh, enjoy the serenity uh, down at... What's the suburb down there? Where's that at? Kalala Bay. Kalala, no, Sussex. Sus oh, yeah, it's Sussex, England. I mean, who wants to go down to Sussex? I mean, wow, this is just off the beach, man. You've got to go down there. So, um, uh, actually, it's, just, it's, it's actually a stone throw from the bay. So it's uh, it's huge. So Murray, give me your gear through, mate. Get the details. Get it up online so people can come down and have a stay down at Sussex, at uh, at the beautiful home that you've uh, you've organised there. Okay, um, do we relocate tiny homes? Well, I guess what they're saying there. Do we, um, as contractors, move a tiny home that you bought, whether it be ours or somebody else's, move that tiny house from Sussex? Thanks, Murray. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, Okay, oh, Fiona's got here. Uh, for the Queensland, Elliot, do the lighter colour bond. Timber combo, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, that's what I'm thinking, Fiona. Definitely going to go for the surf mist walls, the uh, mixed hardwood uh, uh, timber, feature timber on the outside, and and our big corner windows. They're a must. We're actually, people now are actually ordering those in the new custom models. So it doesn't have to be an Elliot. We've actually... We're putting one in a, in, a, in a Jackson. We're putting one in a, in a Charlo. Um, people are, are just loving these corner windows. Just, it really maximises your views and it just brings the outside in, you know. So uh, if you're keen, a lot of the, uh, our big corner windows will actually go onto a lot of our other models. So if you're keen, we've got all that up online. So you can look at that as an optional extra on any of our uh, custom homes. Uh, back to the, do we relocate tiny homes? Sure. Um, not at the moment with our current truck, but in, our, in the new Hino, poor man's Dodge Ram that's coming. Um, oh, we're just, sorry, we've just lost a port. Just check this connection in, uh, what's going on? Oh, no, here we go. We're back on back online, I think. Stop there, is that all right? Um, anyway, uh, what we've got is the um, uh, a new Hino truck. It's just getting a big tray put on the back, and that'll be coming through very shortly. Um, is the internet thing slightly wrong this one? Says it's live, oh so yeah, okay, just... okay. So the uh, yeah, the new Hino truck, it's on its way. We're just getting the uh, uh, the trays getting built and the bull bar and the winch. Actually, this is four wheel drive. I mean, I actually saw it for the first time the other day when I went to Old Mate. I was designing the uh, uh, the tray on the back, uh, sort of pimping it up a little bit, not over the top, just pimping it a little bit. And uh, anyway, for the bull bar, and I, I went there. The, these tires, man, they come up to my chest. These things are massive, man. These things are going to go anywhere. It's like, so really looking forward to cracking this new track open. So what that'll mean is we'll be in a position that we will be able to contract, uh, you can contract us to actually relocate your tiny home. So if you're going to, and then we're actually finding there's a lot of that. I have had an inquiry in the past about doing that multiple times, but not in a position to, but we are going to offer that question. service if people are keen. Sorry, Shani? I've got a question on that. I've so question if, on that. If someone else has a tiny home mm -hmm. and we're going to move it for them, yep. Do they have to supply a Weybridge docket to oh, us? Oh, okay, yes, okay. Okay, that's a good question, Shani. Um, what Shani was just uh, mentioning then, um, if people ring and they want us or Havenwood to actually relocate their tiny homes, um, it'll be one of our criteria that you either have to supply a Weybridge docket or a guarantee that it's actually on the way. I mean, we'll have an idea just looking at it, but mate, if these are overweight, you've got to understand, and we'll be actually also deciding a disclaimer if this is overweight, because uh, being above eight uh, ton GVM, that means we've got to go across every wave bridge that's around. Um, if this comes in overweight, we will be passing the fine on to the client. Now, that's a couple of grand, so you just got to make sure everything's above board because we do our homework when they're coming out of our factory, but if we're driving somewhere to relocate a tiny home, we want to make sure, firstly, everyone on the road's safe and the trailer and the tiny home is capable of 
handling and being uh, safe on the road uh, driving at the weight that it is. So, um, but we can fine tune that down the track anyway. But yeah, the answer to that question is, that was a bit of a long winded answer, wasn't it? Anyway, long story short, we will be offering that service down the track. Uh, and basically at, the, at this point in time, we charge $2.80 per kilometre. So if you look at whether it be our homes or your own home, $2.80 per kilometre. Now that's from our factory to your place and back again. So obviously we've got to get home. Price of diesel these days, um, and actually I think the going rate is a little bit dearer than that, but um, we'll actually just be doing it at just a price just to cover our costs. So, um, uh, so if you're keen, give us a call, we can set all that up. Do you still do the pitch roof models? That's so funny that you should say that. We've, um, at the moment when I look at our display village, all the roofs are all flat again. Now we went through a wave of pitch roofs, and now all the roofs now are all going uh, flat roofs uh, now. So, I mean, it's just personal choice. People um, see uh, the homes. I mean, you could argue that the flat roofs, there's more room inside. I guess if you're looking at volume, yes, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're missing out on uh, any space because the way we design the pitch roof models is that you can actually still walk around and not have any dramas. Uh, we've got a poor connection there again, Dar. Is the, is the internet somewhere local here? Uh, just Oh, okay. Just sorry about that. Um, what's that? That's, that's um it's just because of the oh because of clouds because of clouds because of rain on and off. anyway be on and off so sorry about that um that's on instagram okay so just jump over to facebook if it's got bad connection there on the instagram you know okay uh what compost toilets do you recommend well our standard home all of our homes come standard with the cm2 uh toilet compost toilet by uh eco um uh, and which we, uh, Cletus Moltrum, they, they're unreal, they, they work, they do the job and they're perfect. Um, and especially if you set them up properly, they don't smell. So you just gotta, you gotta read the specs on it all, work it all out. And once you go through and you realize and work out how to actually use a compost toilet, you'll have no dramas with, um, with, uh, with smell and all that sort of stuff. But a, a lot of our clients are upgrading to the CM3. Now this is like a mini long drop. Uh, a mini long drop toilet. Um, the chamber itself is actually under the tiny home, which means you, you you have to, well, you don't have to empty it as frequently. You can actually, I think it's about every six months you empty the CM3s, whereas the CM2 is probably about every couple of weeks um, you've got to empty the CM2 uh, tiny home. Uh, I'm six foot two inches high, so that'll be 1.85 centimetres. Can I stand up in your upper lofts? In actual fact, we've got a home going down to, where's it going down to South Australia? Six foot five was our, um, was the uh, criteria from our client for, for uh, a husband, so he can stand up upstairs. And so, yeah, we've actually, with a couple of roof modifications, we can actually achieve uh, 1.85 centimetres. Harmony, you're bumping the table, Doug. Um, the uh, 1.85 centimetres, clear ceiling height upstairs. So uh, uh, you can walk around upstairs, uh, no problem. Uh, trouble at all. Uh, can you upgrade your homes to handle the cold in the snowies? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of things we actually offer. We uh, can upgrade it by putting the 50 mil refrigeration panel on the floor of the tiny home as well. So it's not just the walls and the roof, which is 75 mil panel, but we can actually do the um, the panelling on the floor as well, which is um, obviously going to have a heck of a lot better uh, uh, resistance when it comes to thermal qualities. And then of course, then we, um, rather than putting sarking around the outside walls, we actually use a thermal blanket on the outside walls as the sarking. So this really brings that tiny home to the next level. These are like a, this is like a giant esky on wheels, you know? So really good for the winter and, uh, and, the, and the colder climates, you know? Uh, okay, um, what size rainwater tanks do you recommend? Well, um, we had some people living on our property, 2000 litres, nowhere near enough. Um, uh, for two people, so we recommend a minimum of 5,000 litres. Uh, actually, some of our clients are either putting a 10,000 litre tank in or putting the two 5,000 uh, litre uh, tanks in, which, uh, because when you when you order, say, say if you have a bit of a drought, there's no rain for ages, the uh, to order a truck in to come and fill it up with water, okay, most of these trucks carry 10 to 11,000 litres of water. The water's cheap. Okay, so really cheap water. Uh, so it's just, you're really actually paying for the truck hire, for the truck to actually get there. So uh, I'd recommend go for the biggest tank as possible, 5,000, 10,000 litres. So we, if you do ring up a truck to fill it up, 
Um, the cost is minimal to actually go from 5,000 to 10,000, like I said, because you're actually paying for the truck hire itself, you know. So uh, can your homes meet the bell ratings? Yeah, well, the um, uh, uh, our homes can be upgraded to suit the, I think it's Bell 27. Bell, if no one knows, it's about fire. Uh, it's about the fire um, uh, qualities of your home. So it's all to do, obviously, if you're in a fire prone area. Um, there's things that you upgraded with um, uh, wire, um, uh, fly screens, uh, gutter guards uh, in the actual gutter itself, skirts around the bottom of the tiny home. And then you can actually upgrade it right up. And we can actually, we've got a home we're actually doing to meet the, I think it's Bell 40. Or Bell 30 rating, which we're actually putting sprinklers on top of the tiny home itself. So that will really uh, max out the um, fire qualities of the home. Okay, last question. Is the checker plate flooring on your decks an extra? Well, in actual fact, if you order our deck and awning roof, uh, the, you, you've actually got a choice. There's no extra for the checker plate. So you can either go checker plate or the treated pine. It really just comes down to personal choice. If you want the checker plate or whether you want the uh, the uh, the treated pine. A lot of people sort of go for the uh, the checker plate because there's less maintenance. But in saying that, the way we uh, set up our treated pine is for it to actually uh, just to weather grow old gracefully. So you don't actually have to ma maintain it anyway. So it really just comes down to personal choice which way people want to go. But the answer to that question is no. You don't have to pay extra for it but hey listen that's it that's enough for me uh today so sorry about instagram we're uh um uh we have some easter's gone on and off anyway Not sli slip out of facebook uh next week i'm gonna have a spell we've got a few things i'm gonna do on the sunday uh but if you're um uh, like i said if you want to take advantage uh, end of financial year so june 30 We've got, I think there's about three or four trailers left that you can actually lock in uh, with VIN numbers. We get your VIN number, we can get you all the paperwork you need so you can actually lock in those tax deductibility for the end of this financial year. So in short, you're paying 140, 150 grand for a tiny home. You can write off basically all of it and save yourself tens of thousands of dollars in a tax write-off uh, because it'll be uh, an office, because you work from home or whatever that case may be. So contact us this week if you want to take advantage of that. Uh, but other than that, listen, have a great week. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have a spell next week. Uh, I'm going to try and do some, get some walkthroughs going for the following week. And um, uru.